Hey, it's Jill Broadbent with Close to My Heart, and today I'm going to talk to you about all things mixed media. This is a series of videos, and so if you want to learn all about our mixed media products and lots of fun techniques for using these products, you are going to want to subscribe to the Close to My Heart YouTube channel. So be sure to ring that bell so you get notified every time we put up a new video. There are many, many videos on our channel that will teach you and show you creative ideas all the time, but this one specifically is mixed media. So if that's something that you're either in love with or you've always wanted to try, you are going to want to stay tuned for all of the four series in this video. Okay, we are going to start out by talking for just a moment about some of the things that make mixed media. Mixed media basically means it's things that add texture and dimension to your projects. So it can be things like texture paste, glitters and gels, all kinds of different products that really just allow you to create unique, fun backgrounds, textures, details, and there's so many different ways that you can play with these products. And that really is kind of the name of the game when it comes to mixed media is play. Just enjoy the process. It's never perfect. It's always just a fun experiment to see what happens when you mix a certain product with another product, build it up, layer it on. If you don't like it, cover it up. It's awesome. It's just such a fun way to play with different products and mediums that will allow you to really achieve really cool looks. So the first one I'm going to show you in this entire video, we'll talk about texture paste and all the different ways that you can use it. So if you take a look at this layout right here, you can see a really subtle background behind this photo. I'm going to show you on the overhead camera so you can see that just a little bit more close up. Can you see all of that detail that is behind my photo? So that is texture paste put through a stencil and then sponged over the top. And you can see it's subtle, but it adds just a really nice dimension. And you can also see that it's never perfect. It's always just a fun little um, just detail that's added. You're just spreading it through the stencil and it doesn't have to go all the way to the edge or make a perfect square. It's just to add some detail behind. So let's take a look at how you can achieve this. I'm going to show you how we can achieve that look. So I'm starting with just some white daisy standard cardstock. Some techniques you'll want watercolor paper for, but some of them work just great with just your everyday white cardstock. So I've got a white daisy piece of cardstock and a stencil. You can use any stencil in your collection, different sizes, different shapes, all the different fun details you can add depending on what stencils you might own or can use. So we're going to open our texture paste and this is opaque matte. So what I uh, like to describe about this texture paste is that it is almost like the consistency of icing. It is uh, more thick and solid. And when it goes on your project, it's going to dry white and opaque. So you won't see anything that's underneath it. If you put this on a pattern paper or a piece of colored cardstock, then the white will be what you see when it dries. So we're doing tone on tone, obviously here with the white. I've also got my different palette knives. And uh, close to my heart, we have four different palette knives that come in, in one package. So you can use whichever one you want for the different techniques you're using. When I'm using a large area and a bigger stencil like this, I just take the large palette knife because it helps me get coverage quickly and easily and able to get it spread nice and smooth all the way across. So you are basically going to spread the texture paste over the stencil and scrape along the stencil so that it is smooth on the top. So you're basically putting in and filling in all of the holes on the stencil and then scraping across it to get it nice and clean and to get that shape of the stencil, the negative space that you have there. So I am going to just call that good. You can always add more, scrape again. It's really easy and really fun and you're just trying to get a nice clean impression all the way across. You can put the excess back into the jar and then peel up your stencil to reveal that texture. So I'll show you this again close up. So there you can see that texture has transferred to the blank areas on the stencil. Now, another thing you can always do is if you want even more dimension, you can come onto your 
stencil and not smooth it out as much. So if I put this across the stencil and I purposefully don't smooth it out every time as it goes across, then when you peel that up, you're going to have a lot more peaks and valleys. You can see here, you can have a lot more dimension and detail. It won't be as smooth and clean, but if you want some of that extra detail, then just don't drag your palette knife as smoothly across and you'll have even more texture through that stencil. So two different ways that you can achieve that. So then you would let this dry. I would not recommend heat setting this texture paste. If you use your heat tool to set this, it almost um, makes it swell and blow up and make it um, a little more cloud-like. And so it's a cool technique if you want that look, but if you're trying to keep it nice and clean like this, you just need to let it air dry and not apply heat. It does change the texture of the paste itself. So now that we've got this done, we would let this dry for just a little while. And once it's dry, I've got one here, you can tell it's dry. There's no tackiness. It feels like actual paste that is dried into place. So then we can go over this and add some color. I'm just going to take a standard close to my heart uh, water-based ink and a sponge. And what I like to do with my sponges when I get these is cut them into quarters. It just allows me to use multiple colors for multiple sponges. So I'm just going to take a quarter of this sponge and go over this. I'm using ballerina ink, but honestly, any ink color would work. And so I'm just going to pounce over this. And you can see I'm coloring mostly the um, paper behind, but I can also really press this color onto the actual texture paste. And so you're getting a little bit of color on both of these pieces in both areas and it kind of gives you a different gradient, the way that the ink applies to the paper and the way that the ink applies to the texture paste itself. So you can be selective as to where you want that color to transfer. You can color the entire thing and it's just really soft and subtle when you use your inks to color your texture paste. So you can see how that color has transferred. And we've got a little color on the actual texture paste and even more intense color on the cardstock behind. So it really still allows that texture paste to pop forward, but also gives some color so that the tone on tone isn't as subtle. You get a little more pop to make that texture paste show up. So that's just one of the really fun techniques you can use with the texture paste. Let me show you a couple more. This one is such a cute card. It says, you're so tweet, so cute, these little birds. But what I want you to pay attention to is this little strip right here. It looks like just a piece of pattern paper or a stamped piece, but it actually in real life has that texture and dimension from the texture paste itself. So all we did was simply go over a piece of cardstock with the texture paste, just like I showed you in the last example, and let it dry so it achieved this piece here, which again, looks great as is. It's got that white texture paste that dries those little hearts. That'd be a really fun detail and way to add that here. But you can also, again, tone on tone with the paper. So I've got ballerina paper and ballerina ink. And then I can do that same technique where I'm sponging over this. And those little hearts will color just a little bit darker and that cardstock below We'll color just a little bit more. And you're able to just get a really fun look by doing that, adding the ink to the texture paste. So I want to show you on the card that fun detail. And you can see that tone on tone, the texture paste with the stencil just really makes that uh, texture paste that only comes in white any color you want it to be. Another thing you can do is color your texture paste before you go to use it. So I want to show you this card right here. Cute little dog, best friend. Now these clouds and this grass are totally free form, just texture paste added. That's no stamping or no pattern paper. It's just the texture paste. And so we've colored that texture paste to get that look. So you can start with our texture paste. I'm going to use one of the smaller palette knives. 
um, to give myself a little bit more control. And you'll put it right down on your work surface. Now, this is an all-purpose mat. It is perfect for doing mixed media because you can clean it and wipe it clean every single time and nothing stains it or sticks to it. So I've got a little pile of texture paste here and I'm going to add just a drop or two of, I'm using Glacier Reinker. So these are the Reinker colors that come in all 40 colors that our ink pads come in and they're made to re-ink your ink pads when they start to get dry. But there are so many other fun uses that you can use these almost like a dye or a paint would be. So you can add the color to the texture paste before you even apply it to a project. You're just going to mix. And this is what I'm talking about when I say it's just so fun to create with these mixed media products because you really get to just play with this and change the consistency, you can change the color to the level that you want it to be. You can go as dark as you want, as light as you want. You could even add in some of our shimmer brushes and get some glitter in here as well. So, so many different options. But then you just get to put this product right onto your paper and you can just form your own little clouds. And however you leave the texture paste is how it will dry. So if I'm creating a little cloud, I can make them as large or as fluffy as I want just by where I leave the texture paste to dry. So we've got one little cloud there. We'll put another one over here. And you can see I've got a lot of dimension with this. I'm really building up that texture paste so that it adds that realistic cloud feeling. And if you don't like where it is, you can always scrape it. So you can scrape that right off and just place it where you're wanting to build up the texture. So there we've got two fun little wispy clouds. Clean off my palette knife, and we'll do the same thing using a Distress Oxide ink. So you can color your texture paste in lots of different ways. Um, I'm showing you two different examples here. I'm just simply pouncing the Distress Oxide pad onto my all-purpose mat and it gives me just a little pool of color right there. And then I can come back in with the texture paste and look at that. Just adding it to that little pile of color is immediately giving me that beautiful green grassy feel that I'm going for. And again, I can add more. It doesn't take much texture paste either. So I would always start with a small amount of texture paste and you can always make some more if you need more color. But this is a great way to color your texture paste as well. So re-inkers, Distress Oxides, even our exclusive ink pad would do the exact same thing here if you want to create that. So then I'm going around the bottom of my card and creating my own little grass area. And again, depending on how much texture I put on there, I can do layers of texture. I can put a nice smooth layer across the back like that. And then I can come back in and do a second layer. And you can see it kind of builds on top of itself. And really just have fun playing with it and creating your own unique scene. So let's take a look at this. So you can see how much dimension is in those clouds and the layers of grass. It almost looks like rolling hills coming across. And that is all achieved by just playing around with how you apply the texture paste and how you build that up and the color, depending on which colors of inks you use to mix together. I hope this is giving you just a small example of what you can do with your texture pastes. This is just the jumping off point. There are so many different things. And once you have a bottle of this texture paste, just play around, have fun mixing different products and trying different techniques to see what you can achieve and what you like. So if you've liked what you've seen here, then be sure to follow along. We will be posting even more tutorials and more videos with Mixed Media in the next coming series. And we have also linked all of the products we've shown here today in the description below. Thanks for joining us.